Hello, welcome back to Let's Learn PT. How are you guys doing? Today we're going to be covering muscular contractions, a relatively simple concept to grasp, but I'm also going to go over some of the applications to physical therapy and how understanding muscular contractions can help us be better therapists. So when talking about muscular contractions, we break it down into two subgroups. Isotonic, a contraction involving movement at the joint, shortening and lengthening of those muscle fibers, and isometrics, where you have activation of that muscle, but there's no movement at the joint. So with isotonic, we break it down further into two subgroups of concentric and eccentric. So concentric, you are shortening those muscle fibers, whereas eccentric, you are lengthening those muscle fibers. And to understand concentric and eccentric, I got a little example with the biceps. So we're here at the shoulder, humerus, elbow, forearm, hand, and biceps going from that supraglenoid tubercle down to that radius, and also that coracoid process down to that bicipital aponeurosis. And what we got going on here, if we bring this hand, this radius, up towards that humerus, the head of the humerus, we are shortening those muscle fibers. We are achieving a concentric contraction versus we're up here with that concentric contraction versus lengthening those muscle fibers. That insertion at the radius and at the fascia of the forearm is getting further away from that origin up in the shoulder. Further away lengthening eccentric contraction. So that's the difference between concentric and eccentric contractions and a quick little example with the biceps. So now we get on to isometrics again constant length you're not moving. An example with this would be the deltoids. So if I have a patient post-op rotator cuff repair and I'm doing some isometrics with them, some deltoid isometrics put a ball behind their elbow, put it against the wall, and I'm going to have them push that elbow back into the wall. There's activation of that muscle. You can feel that muscle activate, but there's no actual difference in the length. There's no movement going on at that joint because it's an isometric contraction. That with the deltoid, you know that 100% with the isometric contraction, that deltoid tuberosity is not getting any closer to that spine of scapula because there's no change in length of that muscle because there's no movement at the joint. So the final thing I want to cover is a little bit about the quadriceps and eccentric lengthening and how we can use understanding eccentric, concentric, and different muscular contractions to help us as therapists. So I have a patient, they're doing long arm quads, 7.5 pounds around their ankle, nothing just cake to them and then I get them up on a step and I have them stand on the edge of the step and they're stepping down slow doing anterior step downs and every time they do it they immediately fall right to the ground and plant their foot so I'm like okay maybe that's just a little bit difficult for them I get them in front of a chair and I have them do sit to stands and they're fine getting up from that sitting position, but coming back down, they can't control it. I, as a therapist, need to recognize that the eccentric contraction of their quads is not strong, and that we need to work on eccentric activities of the quads, just like these anterior step downs and the downward descending motion in those sit to stance to strengthen the eccentric contraction of those quads and improve my patient's function. So that's all I got for you guys today, just a little bit about muscular contractions and a little application to how we can learn and use that in the clinic as therapists. Thank you guys for watching. Follow us on Instagram at Let's Learn PT. And let me know in the comments what you guys want to see next week. Thank you.